Yeah. That's it. Okay. Good. Have fun. Hi. Thanks. So, hello, everybody. And so today we are going through the second half of the statistics. And as you can see, for the first half, we are basically introducing what is involved in the statistics course. We learn something about the representation of data whereby we learn different kinds of diagrams and graphs to represent the disc, uh, discrete or continuous data we have. And the second half, we learn about the measure of location and measure of spread, which we use the, uh, which we use mean, mode, and median. And also for the measure of sprites, we use standard deviation or variance to specify or quantify this measure. And for the third part of the previous lesson, we learn how to calculate probability especially using the tree diagrams. And there are a few very important definitions in probability, which are uh, mutually exclusive, independent, and also the conditional probability, which we should take note of. And for the permutations and combinations, we basically these two concepts are not that difficult to understand. What we need to do is to look at the examples on the notes and to practice as many questions as possible so that we can familiarize ourselves with different situations. And we know that there is a major difference between the permutations and combinations. For permutations, the order is important, but for combinations, the order does not matter. Okay, so for today's lesson, we are moving on to the second half of the statistics course, which is about the probability distribution. So, and in terms of the probability distribution, sorry, I just choose. So for probability distribution, we have two different big cases. We have discrete cases, and we also have continuous cases. And for the discrete random cases, we have the binomial distribution. And for the continuous cases, we have the normal distribution. So out of this job is to learn about the diff learn about the binomial distributions and the normal distributions. And there are a few things which we need to take note of. So I will draw oops, sorry. Where's my blank pages? Okay, here. Okay, so we know that we are going to have probability distributions. And we have discrete cases, we have continuous cases. And for this one, we have binomial distribution. And for this one, we have normal distribution. And first of all, before we delve, delve into the details, we need to take know about what's the definition of probability distribution. Why do we study that? So for example, we usually have a case like given, for example, given a coin, coin, and we need to flip the coins, for example, for five times. And we want to know that what's the probability for we get zero heads, or so we want to know the probability for different number of heads. So this is the number of heads, and this is the probability. So we want to know that what's the probability for one head, for zero head, for one head, for two head, until we have five head. So we want to know the probability for each case. And what probability distribution does is that they introduce a random variable, like for example, like x. And this random variable, we use this big x to represent the number of x, number of heads, sorry. And so we want to know, calculate what the probability for x equals to zero or probability of x equals to one and so on. Right. And before we introduce the probability distribution, we can also learn, we can also know how to calculate each probability. But the reason why we introduce prob dist probability distribution is to kind of classify these different situations into different cases. And we use, it's like, I think for different probability distribution that they're, they're just like models. We use this model to model different questions so that for each individual cases, we do not need to think of how to calculate that. We can just like plug in the model and apply the model. And there are two very important models we are going to learn for this case, for this lesson or for this syllabus is the binomial distribution for the discrete cases and normal distribution for the continuous cases. And actually the question or the example I talked 
I was talking just now, it's a, an example of a binomial distribution. So what is binomial distribution is what we are going to talk about later. But before we delve into the detail, I would like to give a big picture. So for binomial distribution, we later will see what's the definition and what's the form of that and what's the condition we need to take note of when we use the binomial distribution. It's like, what are the, some of the cases which we can use the binomial distribution? And after that, we, we need to learn how to use binomial distribution to calculate the probability. So it's a calculation of probability. So for calculation, we need to calculate the probability and also sometimes expectation and also the variance. And for normal distribution, we also need to know about the definition. And later we need to know about, there's a very special thing about that. It's the standard, standardization. Because I'm not so sure that whether I noticed that some of you have the normal distribution at table. So in order for us to use the table, we need to do the standardization. And I will talk about that later. And also we need to use it to do some calculation. And the last part is like sometimes we can approximate a binomial distribution with a normal distribution. So it's like when discrete cases, because we know that for discrete cases, when the uh, distance between different points, different individual points be, be, like become so close, they are approximately a continuous function. Yeah, so last part is about approximation. Oops. Okay, so this is what we are going through today. And so first of all, we are going to start with the binomial distribution. So before that, before we formally delve into the binomial distribution, I would like to talk about an example on the notes. So this is actually a case of a, the binomial distribution. But here we solve this, we solve this case without using the binomial distribution. And it says that a fair dice has four faces. One face is colored pink, one is orange, one is green, and one is black. So I think. Oops. Okay. Uh, what's the? So okay, one is color pink, one is orange, and one is blue, and one is black, and five such deaths are thrown and the number that fall on a green face is counted. The random variable is the number of dice that fall on a green face. Draw up a table for probability distribution of x. Okay, so what do we mean by the pro draw up a table for probability distribution of x? It's like what I draw for the previous page. We need to think about this is x and this is a probability. And we want to calculate the probability of x being one, being zero, being one, being two, being three, and being four, right? And how do we calculate that? I think this is what is probably what we have learned before. For example, take the case for x equals zero. It means that none of the faces is green. So it means that, so then we think about, so there are like five such deaths. In order for the first death to have a non-green face, what's the probability for that? It's three over four because the probability of having a green face is one over four. So the probability of not having a green face is three over four. And in order for all of the five deaths to have no green face, we need to calculate three over four to the power of five. Yeah. And what about one? One is that three or four to the power of one times eh, times four, and one of over four to the power of one. It means that among the five cases, one of them we get green, and the other four we get non-green faces. So the probability of getting green face is one quarter, and the probability of getting non-green face is three quarters. However, we should not stop here because we are not so sure about which death has a green face. There are actually five possibilities. We can let the first 
dice to have a green face, we can also let the second, third, or fourth, or fifth one to have the green face. So we need to multiply by five here, which is five choose one. So among the five dances, we choose one of them to have the green face. And so to generalize, this is a binomial distribution, whereas the probability of success, success means, sorry, success means having a green face is one over four. And the pro so the probability of x equals to x means that we have x times, we have x green faces, so we use one over four to the power of x. And we have n minus x or non-green faces, so we use three over four to the power of n minus x. And what's n c x? This basically means, sorry. This basically means choose x out of out of n. So it means that for the five different dances, we can we can choose x of them. We can choose any x of them to have the green faces. Yeah. So this is the formula for the binomial distribution, which is very important. And so using this formula, we can then calculate the probability for x equals to zero, from x equals to zero to x equals to four. So yes, and then we get this distribution table. And after talking about an example of binomial distribution, we are now formally learning what's binomial distribution. So we learned that in order for, this is the formula we see previously. So it means that when the number of success x is a random variable, when the random variable equals to x, all the number of successes is equal to x. What's the probability for that? It's the number of success each time, p to the power of x times the number of failure, oh, sorry, the probability of failure to the power of number of failure, right? And then we need to times how many possible combinations of those uh, successes and failures. It just choose n, uh, choose x from n, n choose c, so it's c, n c x. Yeah, so this is a very important formula. And so basically this is kind of a definition of the binomial distribution. But what other times we can use binomial distribution? It, it, Certainly, it does not mean that for any kind of problem, we can use the binomial distribution to model that. So there are two, there are three actually very important conditions. First of all, only two possible outcomes, and they are mutually exclusive. Do, do you still remember what mutually exclusive means? It just means that the probability of A intersects B is zero. So to represent that in a Venn diagram, just like A and B, and there's no intersection between them. So that mutually exclusive. And because they say that there are only two possible outcomes, then also means that probability of A plus probability of B equals to one. So it's either success or either failure. So it's either has a green face or it does not have a green face, right? So, this is the first condition for the binomial distribution. This is also very easy to understand because we know that by like bi sometimes they just represents two, right? So binomial distribution is like two possible outcomes. And the second condition is fixed number of n trials. This is also quite easy to understand if you look at the formula because we know that if n is a variable, then we cannot use this one to calculate anymore. Or n tends to infinity, we cannot use this formula to calculate. So we need to have fixed number of trials. Just like in the previous case, the fixed n is just five. Like we know how many times we are going to, or how many dice we have, or how many times we are going to flip for the same coin or dice. And the third one, outcomes of each trial is independent of each other. Why is this important? Because in the previous lesson, we talked about what are the independent events. Independent event means that probability if A intersects B, or probability of both A and B occurs equals to probability of pro A times probability of B. If this 
if it's if the a and b they're not independent of each other, then this equation does not hold true. And we see that in our formula, it's actually what's the p to the power of x actually comes from. It's just a p times p for x times. So this is the probability for first death or for second death. So in order for this one to hold true, we need to ensure that the probability of every event occur at the same time equals to the probability equals to the product of the probability for each case. And so the independence condition is very important for this case. Yes. So there are three conditions and there is one definition. And usually during the exam or when we are writing questions, we have a notation for binomial distribution. It just reads x follows. So this this cur curly line of this wave-like notation is just read as x follows. So it means that x follows a binomial distribution with parameter n and p, whereby n represents the total number of trials and p is the probability of success. Yes. And so later, as we binomial distribution is a very powerful model, and we can use because since your syllabus only has binomial distribution and normal distribution, and actually binomial distribution is the only one which uses it, which is used to model a discrete random variable. So basically we know that once we have a discrete random variable question, we have to use a binomial distribution. We have to assume these conditions are true. And when we are doing these kind of questions, I think the first thing we need to do is to find out what n is and what p is. Because after only after that, then we can plug the n and p into the formula and do the calculation. So let's try that. So let's try see like what's the n and p for this next example. So before that, I think I want to have a uh, yes. Okay. Okay, so in some college, 60% of students are boys, so boy, 60%. And students can choose exactly one of games, drama, or music. So games, 17%. And what? Drama, 10%. And music, the rest of them, which is 15%. And girls, 40% of them. And what about games, 30%, drama, 55%, and music, 15%. Okay, so now they say that five drama students are chosen. Find the probability that at least one of them is a boy. So what's N here? So we know that, okay, before we take n, we think about the random variable. So random variable is what? It's x, which represents the number of boys, sorry, boys, which choose drama, like number of boys among the five students, five students choose drama, who choose drama. Okay, so because, and then we want to calculate the probability of x for each value, right? Okay, so what's n here? n is basically the largest number x can, can take. So n is five in this case, right? And the tricky part is the probability. So what's p here? p is the probability of success. So even though it does not say it, it, was, it is not said explicitly, but what it means in this question, or what it implies to us is that we are, we are going to use the probability of a student is a boy, given that the student choose drama. So the probability here in this case is actually a conditional probability. So it's the probability of selecting a boy with a drama student. And remember, 
our formula for the probability of distribution. So this is actually the is the probability of a boy intersects. Oh, sorry. Given a student study drama, so it's a probability of boy given it's a drama. So it's the probability of boy intersects a drama over the probability of a drama, which is probability of a boy intersects a drama plus the probability of a girl intersects a drama. So then we use the above, this is basically like a tree diagram, and we use this to, and we plug into that. And we can calculate that the P in this case is three of over 14. So now we have our N, which is five, and we have our P, which is three over 14. And we want to find that what's the probability that at least one of them is a boy. Right, and so it's just like p probability of x greater or equal to one, and actually here, because we know that x is a discrete variable, it means that x can only take integer values in this case. It also makes sense because we cannot have one point five boys; we can only have an integer number of boys. So in this case, it's just one minus probability of x equals to zero because we know that probability all the prob the probabilities of all individual cases must sum up to one, right? So it's one minus probability of x equals to zero. And this part is where we use the binomial distribution formula. So what's the probability of x equals to zero? It's just we use uh, five out of five, like choose five out of five, this is one, and we use this is the number of success is zero. The probability of success is three or 14, so three or 14 to the power of zero. And probability of failure is 11 or 14, so we use 11 over 14 to the power of five. And after some basic calculation, we can find that the probability of x greater or equal to one is 0 0.71. You can use the calculator to do that. Okay. So now is. It can be raised. Hold on, try it. Try hitting the same thing twice. Which thing? Uh, hit the eraser again. This one? Yeah. And now try highlighting it. Not, not the eraser. Uh, hit the, yeah. This one? Yeah. Well, yeah, that works, but uh, okay. if you hit the eraser and just try to go. Okay. Okay, so what we have done is to calculate, do some calculation. So see this case. So we have finished. So we have finished the definition of that. And we also finished the condition of the binomial distribution. And we have finished the calculation of the probability. Now for a binomial distribution, what's the expectation of the random variable, what's the mean value of that, and what's the standard of the standard deviation or the variance of that. This is what we are going to talk about now. So now actually we are moving on to calculate the expectation and variance of x. Right. So before we do that for a binomial distribution, we can do that for a, how do I say, for a general case. So remember what's the expectation. Expectation of x is just the sum of, for example, if x can take n values, then it's just sum of sorry, xi times the probability, oops, times the probability of each case, right? And this i can be from zero or, n, or from one to n, anyone, depending on, on how many number of values x i can take. Are we okay with this formula? This is basically like 
the definition of the expectations. For example, uh, if I throw a dice, what's the expectation value? It's a fair dice. What's the expectation value of uh, the number I get? And the number I get, because we know that the probability of getting a one is one over six, the probability of getting two is also a one over six. Plus plus and you'll probably get a six is also one over six. So just like one plus plus six over six. So it's three point five. So the expectation value if I throw a if I throw a fire dice is three point five. And this is the way we calculate the expectation. And what about the variance? It's the same. So, sorry. Mm. You can look at the phone. So, so, the variance we are using the formula we need, we have for the ex squared and expectation of x. Because in the previous lesson, we have learned that a variance is actually the expectation of the x squared minus oh no not an expectation of x over square so as long as we know what's the expectation of x square and expectation of x then we can calculate the variance and what's about the expectation of x square it's just using the same thing it's n from i equals to zero x i square times the probability for each x i every times this probability, right? And then we substitute that. Then we can get a general formula for variance. And the general formula is here. So this is the mean, and this is the square. And for the variance, we just use this one to minus this one square, right? Yeah, it's just this part. And so actually we have a very easy example here. So for this example, I will just like quickly go through this. So it says a factory makes a large number of ropes with lengths either 3m or 5m. So we know that there are only two different cases here. And x can only take two values, either 3 or 5. There are four times as many ropes of length 3m, 3 meter, and there are ropes of length 5 meter. A rope is chosen random than the expectation. So now we know that, OK, so xi can be 3 or 5. And what's the pi for each case? Because there are four times as many ropes of less three meters. So this is should be five over five, and this is one over five. So the expectation is just like three times four over five plus five times one over five is three point four. And we can use the similar method to calculate the expectation square, and we use this formula to calculate the variance. Yes. But Anyway, we are still at the binomial distribution. So the reason why we introduce this huge part or this small part, sorry, this small part is to give a general idea of how, how to calculate the mean and the standard deviation for any distribution, not only the binomial distribution, it, actually for any discrete distributions. But we have a formula for the binomial distribution as well. We can use this method to calculate the variance or the mean value for binomial distribution. But I think during the exam, you can just use this formula. And it's very important to take notes or take down of them. So the expectation of a binomial distribution is just n times p. And the variance is n p times p times q. Because q is referred to, q is referred to as a probability of failure. So it's like naturally the one minus the probability of success. Right. And for I prove that I, I think the proof is not like required for this course but later i will introduce the proof for the expectation of x equals to np i think it's quite it's quite interesting proof but before we introduce the definition or we introduce the proof we can have an intuitive understanding of the expectation so what does that mean 
it means that because we know that expectation of x, it just means it's like what's the most likely value of this x to have? Or it's like, for example, in this case, that probability at least one of them is a boy, the number of boys. So it's kind of what's the average number of boys we can have for five drama students, or like without learning more, more about the detail, like what's naturally the number of students we can get. So it's just like use the total number of the students times the probability of that being a boy. So it's like, it's kind of the most naturally, natural way to think of like how many number of boys we have in this case. So let me think about another very easy example. So let's say uh, if I give you a fair dice, I, or not dice, a fire coin, coin, and can either have head and the tail. And for each case, the probability is half. And if I ask you to store it for four times, what's the num and so what's the expected number of times you can get a head? It's two right because we know that it's half half. The the probability of getting a head and the probability of getting a tail is equally likely. So you naturally think of that as two, but in the real cases, it's not definitely two. So we have a different probability for the number of heads being zero, being one, being two, being three, being four. But the expected value is two. It's like it's the most intuitive or the most natural one. So it's also something like expected value, it's something you expect. So, the, so it's kind of easy to understand that ex equals to mp. It's just the number, total number, times the probability of getting that success, right? So, but this is not a rigorous proof. It's just an intuitive understanding. And now I can introduce a proof for that. So, so what's about the expectation? So this is for binomial distribution and the expectation of x. And we know that it is the sum of i equals to sum of xi times pi, right? And with x i can take, x i can take anything from zero to n. So it's it's uh, sum of x. Okay, i so just sum of i, right? And the probability is n choose i times the probability of p to the power of i times e one minus p to the power of n minus i, correct? So this is the binomial distribution formula we had just now is a way to calculate the probability of having i success out of n trials, whereby p is the probability of success and Oh, sorry, this is one minus p, sorry, where one minus p is the probability of failure. And now we need to simplify this one, but how do we simplify? So we can take out an n first, and we can also take out a p and what it becomes. Okay, sorry, so I think before we do that, we can kind of expand the n choose i. I equals to zero. I so this is n factorial factorial over i factorial n minus i factorial. Oops, sorry. And this is p i y minus p n minus i. Right. It still doesn't seem very nice, but we know that i can cancel out with one of them, right? And it becomes i minus one factorial. So it's So it's n factorial, i minus one factorial, n minus i factorial, p i, one minus p, n minus i. And now oh, what we are going to do is we, because we want, we still want something like a combination formula, but this is not. In order to get a combination formula, we need to have something like n minus one here. And this one is because n minus i, we know that n minus i equals to n minus 1 minus i minus 1, right? So we can do some magic trick. We bring out one 
n p out. So the inner terms becomes n minus one factorial over i minus one factorial, and this one becomes it's the same. So it's the same as n minus one minus i minus one factorial, and it's p to the power of i minus one and y minus p. This one is also equals to n minus one minus i minus one. And so what we are having here inside is just n i equals to zero. n minus one choose i minus one, p to the power of i minus one. And this is And because we know that now i cannot be zero anymore, like the, the i equals to zero cases naturally vanish because if i equals to zero, this one does not uh, kind of it does not it is not well defined. So it actually becomes i equals to, from i equals to one to the power of n. And this one, this term is actually equals to one because it's just the sum of all the probabilities of choosing i minus one items out of n minus one trials. Yeah, so this term actually equals to one. So overall it equals to np. Yeah, so this is kind of a proof for that. Yeah, if you want to take a picture, I can, okay. Yeah, so this is an essentially a proof of why the expectation for binomial distribution equals to n times p, whereby n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success. And now we have a very easy example here. And the example here, what's the idea behind this example is actually what I talked about very loosely just now. It's because of the expectation value. It's the value you expect. It's the most intuitive value that came into your head. So it should be if we were asked to find what's the value of x or what's the value of random variable, which has the highest probability, it's definitely that one. However, this is since based on the assumption that that value is an integer because we know that x can only take an integer. But the expectation of x can be a non-integer, right? So if the expectation of x is an integer, then the value of x that has the highest probability is just the expectation of x. However, if the expectation of x is not an integer, then the value of x that has the highest probability is the closest integer. Not, not necessarily the closest, but for example, if the expectation is 10.5, so, so the value of x with the highest probability is either 10 or 11, in which case you need to check whether 10 or 11 has a higher probability. But this trick kind of reduces our pain of like calculating the probability for every single cases. It reduced that to two because there are only two possible cases. And so for this, we can, now we can look at this example. So the probability that Sue completes the Sudoku puzzle correctly is 0 0.75. And it, she attempts 14 puzzles every month. So we know that n equals to 14, and the probability equals to 0 0.75, right? That's how, yeah. And the number of that she completely successfully is denoted by x. So we know that the expectation of x is just 14 times 0 0.75, right? Because n is 14, p is 0 0.75. And we know that it's 10.5. And it is not an integer, so we cannot say that the value of x that has the highest probability is 10.5 because x cannot take a non-integer value. So it's the answer should either be 10 or 11. And our next step is just uh, to find, use a binomial distribution formula to find the probability for n equals to 10 and n equals to 11 and compare them and choose the one with the higher probability, right? And I think another trick or another thing we need to take notes during the exam is that sometimes when we are asked to calculate the random variable or the mean value of the random variable, we need to take note of like some, are there any other constraints? For example, in this case, it says that she attempts 14 puzzles every month. What about X represents the number of success or the number of, yeah, the number of success in a year? Then we should use 
14 times 0 0.75, then times 12, right? We just need to take note. I think in this case, it just like, it, it doesn't say anything about X, so it just like means every month. We just assume X is the number of success in, in a month, not in a year. Yeah. So I think now we are basically, we have finished everything for the binomial distribution. Do you have any questions? No. No. Okay, cool. And so now we are going to talk about the normal distribution, right? I think probably before we talk about normal distribution, like we can probably have a several minutes of break. Yeah. We want that. Okay, so we can start from uh, five to three. So yeah, yeah two fifty five. 